you were going through a lot of uh, other situations. Didn't your dad end up dying from cancer around that time? Yeah. My dad had died um, a year earlier. And then uh, one of my best friends actually died two weeks before Big died. So I was like, mm-hmm. it was just like back-to-back drama craziness. Didn't you consider suicide at that point? No. No? No, I I tattooed a giant black widow on my back, but no, I never, I didn't consider suicide at that point. Well, there was a quote that, that, that I read from you. You said, uh, I'm a realist who believes in learning from mistakes and tragedy, plus I have my kids to live for. I knew I had to keep uh, on keeping for them and myself. Yeah, I may have said that, but I didn't say anything about suicide. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so so big dies, and then, you know, there's still the business part of what's happening, and Big was partnered with Lance on Rivera, mm-hmm. who at that point started to ramp up on entertainment. And he ends up signing Cameron, and he also signed you. Yes. And this was through Epic. Yes, through Epic. Now, the first song you put out, was that Money off the Woo soundtrack? Yep, that was the first song. Okay, and you went on to write all your other songs, but this particular song was written by The Locks. Yeah, because Unbelieved when he first signed me that, in his own words, female rappers can't write, so we need to find someone to write for you. And I remember him me telling him, like, you've heard me rap my own music. And he's like, yeah, no, you know, we're going to get the best writers for you. And me being like, huh? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, okay, because at the time, you know, I don't know anything about the music business. I'm I'm fresh out of Philly. So yeah, the locks, he sent me to Maryland with the locks and they wrote money. And then he put that out as the first single. And then after that, you know, I really just felt like I had a point to prove, which was I don't need anybody to write for me. Like, that's actually, as I always say, I always I actually prefer the writing process more than the actual rapping process. So eventually he got it. But at that, you know, particular time when I first got signed, he he just had this firm belief that girls can't write rhymes. Well, I think it was around that time that the Horse and Carriage remix comes out uh, right. for Cameron, and that featured Big Pun, Wyclef, Silk the Shocker, and you. Yes. Okay. And, I mean, Horse and Carriage was a, a big song. It was. So now you're on the remix, so I feel like things are starting to kind of build up for you at that point. Right. Okay. And then that next year, in 99, you put out Stand Up, featuring Ghostface Killer from Wu-Tang. Right. You guys seem kind of cozy in that music video. I know. Everybody says that, but it wasn't (laughs) like that at all. He was just mad cool. It wasn't like that at all. Okay. I mean, what was your, I mean, around that time, what was your experience being signed as a rapper and being on entertainment, which is, you know, Big's partner's label? And, you know, Cameron is, is, you know, becoming going into his own and so forth. Like, I mean, are you feeling the music industry at this point? No, because Mm. I feel like I don't think that they knew what to do with me as an artist. Like, everyone seemed to have their own vision of what I should be. And by me not, you know, knowing really anything at that point about the music business... I'm being pulled in a hundred different directions as to what my quote unquote image should be. And I feel like my image was what it was when I, you know, when I got signed, I had red hair. Like it wasn't like they sat me down and like, you know, transformed me or did a makeover. Like this is how I walked in, you know, what, why do we have to change me into some version of myself that I'm not? And I don't know if it all was un or if it was un and Sony, but, you know, obviously most of my, um, I guess, like, 
how I should be conforming conversations came from Un. So after a while, I started kind of feeling like Un was like a Svengali kind of thing. Like it was, he was very controlling over every aspect of what was going on. And I think in his mind, I don't want to speak for him, but I think in his mind, he wanted me to be like a pop rapper, like a a a a rap version of like Britney Spears or something, which I'm not. So me trying to conform to what you know he wanted as far as records, it was it was becoming a huge problem, like a huge problem. 